Media is a big part of our lives because some of the ways we stay informed, educated and connected is through media. And that could either be through radio, newspapers and television to name a few. But what happens when the people who are bringing you all of that stay implicated? Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to Monday edition of Soda Today. Tonight we are talking about the importance of media, the kinds of implications journalists in particular come across and the possible solutions to prevent this from happening. Joining us in studio tonight is the executive director and founder of the Agrae Cluster Trust, Jerome Cluster, as as well as Temba Siputugele, who will be helping us unpack the topic tonight. Gentlemen, welcome to Soto Today and thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Thank you. Now, I'm going to start with you, Jerome. Um, let us take it to the top. You are mm. the founder of a great cluster trust. What motivated you to establish the trust and also what is, all, what is it all about? Mm, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, the Agri Cluster Trust is a public benefit organization which is named after my father, Dr. Agri Cluster, who was a towering South African journalist, a uh, crusading editor uh, uh, for the Soweto newspaper, and um, also a community builder. You know, in 1988, when he became editor of the Soweto, he launched an initiative or a philosophy called nation building, which simply means caring for others. You know, you know, it sought to rebuild the broken structures uh, of our communities that have been devastated by the political violence of the 1980s. And of course, this was all happening under apartheid. So their idea was to say, how do we rebuild our communities? And he used his editorship at Sowetan as a platform to do that. And for myself to begin, it took, it took quite some time uh, because it was difficult growing up as Agri Cluster's son. Um, I had some negative uh, 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 sort of feeling towards it because I didn't understand the concept. But luckily, as Ndades Portugal will also say uh, later, I'm sure, uh, because he's also a great writer, writers record history and dad, my dad was a writer. So he wrote a lot of columns and articles and reading through these helped me grasp the concept of nation building. And of course, again, I'm lucky to have people like Ndades Portugal, people like Ndade Joe Kroll, Ndade Tamima Zwai, Anton Harbour. These are great journalists who worked with my father for many years and were able to, to, to also help him build this nation building uh, concept. And they helped me to understand what nation building was about. And once I understood it, um, from his writings and all these wonderful people, I was able to then see that it was more than about one person, and it was bigger than my father, and he knew that too. It was about all of us, and how do we, uh, uh, as individual, contribute to the collective to make life better for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. So we were very, very fortunate to have people who still remembered my father and his good deeds to help us along the way as they continue to do so. Mm -hmm. Now, um, talk to us about Black Wednesday. Well, what is it and what is it all about? Well, I mean, when Black Wednesday happened, I wasn't born yet. Uh, <laughs> so it happened in 1977 on the 19th of October. Um, that this put together, of course, will be able to uh, uh, give us more details about that because mm -hmm. I'm coming from a point of view as someone who's read about it and had to do research about it. Mm -hmm. And on that day, um, a number of organizations, over 19 organizations that were aligned to the black consciousness movement were banned, including three newspapers, which was The World, Weekend World, and Pro Veritate. And that did last day, my father. He was uh, working as a news editor for Weekend World at the time, and then the Pesi uh editorship. And um, early in the morning, uh, police uh, started arresting black leaders who aligned to the black consciousness movement. But not only black leaders were arrested, I mean, priests were arrested. Um, you also had uh, journalists being arrested, which my father was one, that the Pesi was one. My father was taken from his home, Gomiro Lens. You know, and he was at home with his mother who was scared and terrified. Uh, let's not forget at that time, you know, the police under the apartheid state were killing people. Mm -hmm. You know, and only a month before that, in September, and that Steve Buke had been brutally murdered under police custody. You know, and so my father and his colleagues, they uh, used their pens as weapons to fight against the system because they were, they were incest, they were terribly angry about the death of that Steve Biko and, um, of course, that got them into hot water with the police, and they were part of those who were arrested, thrown into prison. Mm -hmm. And the, this was a, a, an attempt by the apartheid state to stifle media freedom. 
and to also break, break the back of the resistance and silence those who opposed apartheid. Mm -hmm. So on that at last I was taken to Modorbi prison um, and he spent over six months over there with people like Bontate and Tatomotlana um, and it, 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 was, it was terrible. It was terrible. He was uh, arrested under Section uh, 10 mm -hmm. of the Internal Securities Act, which stated that the Minister of Police, and that the Jimmy Kruger, um, could keep you in prison for as long as he felt it was necessary. For as long as he felt that you were a, a threat to the community, you were kept uh, 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 detained without trial. Mm -hmm. you know? And so it was a very difficult time. And so nowadays, when we reflect on that day, we look back and say, uh, we celebrate the courageous spirit of all those journalists, activists, mm -hmm. and editors who stood up against tyranny and, and spoke out against apartheid because they exposed all the terrible things that were happening under this regime to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, and Dr. Temple, let's come to you. We know that media is important because, like I mentioned earlier, it keeps us informed, educated, and we are able to know about what's happening around us. But there are people that don't understand that. Why are journalists important in our society? You know, journalists are not just mere workers. If you think, you know, you just go to school, study journalism, come work eight to four and go home. We are activists in our own rights because what you must understand is that media on its own, it is enshrined in the constitution. No any other profession or career is being mentioned in the constitution. Freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of the press is all that in the in the constitution. So media, because it's, we call it the fourth pillar of our democracy, after the legislature, executive, and the judiciary. So when we begin to teach people about the importance of the media, is that this is one component that holds all the three pillars of democracy accountable: the judiciary, executive and the legislature. So it is the media that holds, that shine the light, that bring us the news, that tells us the things that any, any government could have, been, could have hidden. So hence, journalists are important in a democracy, and journalists, journalists should behave ethically all the time. Whether in social media, in doing their, in their duties, journalists play a very pivotal role. So why we say journalists are important actors in the political realm? is because apart from not having the media like in other countries, mm -hmm. we would not be knowing about what is happening. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, the media is to inform, educate, or entertain. I don't know what entertainment is that is, mm -hmm. but the media plays a central role. It's a glue that binds us. It's a conduit between the elected representatives, mm -hmm. those in power, and communities, the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. Hence, now we have things like community media, where mm -hmm. people within a, a certain area should access media, should mm -hmm. access because commercial media on its own is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the, con the conversation is going to continue after the break. There's a, an article that you wrote where you spoke about, you know, society not honoring journalists, but that's something that we're going to answer after the air break. On the 19th of October, 2022, Media Freedom Day, a great cluster trust in partnership with the South African National Editors Forum, the University of Edwardesrand, the Soweto newspaper, Alex FM and DM5 Incorporated will host the a great cluster annual colloquium to commemorate the events that took place on the same day 45 years ago. We will unpack that and more right after the ad break. Make sure that you don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Soto Today. Thank you for making sure that um, you chose to stay with us. If you are tuning in, we are talking about the importance of the media and how those who help us stay informed can be implicated at times. We are still joined in studio by Executive Director and Founder of a Grey Cluster Trust, Mr. Jerome Cluster, as well as Mr. Temba Siputugela, who is the Communications Strategist and Media Trainer of the Press Council. Now, before the ad break, um, I did mention to you that uh, there's an article that you wrote where you mentioned that society does not honor journalists and some are even forgotten for the work that they have done. How do we change um, the narrative and make it a positive one? Okay, no, great. Uh, with that article, what I was trying to, to, to cite is to bring into the table a discussion between the media community and government. If you look at, at some building street names, they are named after certain politicians, some of them during apartheid era. Yet our own, the George Holloway's, the Agricola State Peace are not honored in that particular fashion. So I'm trying to engage in a discussion with the government specifically 
the Department of Arts, Sports and Culture and the Department of, of Higher Education <laughs> to say, can you sit down and say, how best can you honor these doyens of journalism, these ones who brought, who helped bring this freedom? Because without them, we would have known about what happened in 1976, what happened during the Shabville massacre. So it is through their pens and through their lenses of the cameras that they helped mm -hmm. to bring South Africa to be a kind of democracy that it is. As much as it's good and well to honor politicians and musicians, but journalists, they have played a very pivotal role in unshackling the, the, the chains of apartheid. So in that, I'm trying to say, can you see it, not try to honor them only during what you call Black Wednesday commemoration and celebration of, of uh, Press Freedom Day? Is to say that continuously, also because I'm also in, in the academic space, to say in academia, we should begin to decolonize our journalism uh, syllabuses and modules. Mm -hmm. Begin to know, because I, I bet you, I ask a lot of people, do you know your history, the evolution of black journalism? Most students don't even know, because you're still reading the very old textbooks that won't help you as soon as you get into the newsroom. So for us to begin to have the, the, uh, 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 this debate will also help in decolonizing the kind of journalism that students are leaning today. And I'm doing my bit where I'm teaching at Rose University, part-time, I'm doing the bit where I'm, I'm teaching at my alma mater, Cape Henson University of, of Technology, try to teach students relevant journalism that I've learned from the, uh, from at the last day, George Holloway, Apex Goboza, through their writings, through working with them. I was quite privileged to have worked under Dr. Cluster, mm -hmm. a very astute editor. Now, let's bring it back to you, Jerome. Tell us um, about the, this year's theme for the Agri Cluster Annual Colloquium. What can we expect? Mm. Um, well, maybe we could start uh, with me just giving you a brief background about the colloquium. So the colloquium, uh, it was initiated in 2020. And the theme then was surviving 2020 and media credibility going forward. And the reason why we did that was that uh, obviously in 2020 we had COVID hit and it found the media industry already reeling. It already had problems that were only just worsened by COVID-19 and a lot of journalists lost their jobs. A lot of community newspapers were closed down. A lot of families going hungry, that's what it translates to. And uh, we felt that we had to try and find solutions to these problems. Because as our chairman, Joe Cholle, always says, he says, um, the problems facing the media are not uh, problems that are just happening from uh, uh, nowhere, because that the media does not operate in isolation, but it is part of a society. So it, they are societal problems. And so um, that was, was then themed surviving 2020 and media credibility going forward. And then the following year, we looked at the safety and security of journalists. Uh, and it was important again because, um, of course, last year we had the July, the July unrests and a lot of journalists were being attacked, um, especially during the riots and the lootings that were happening. Journalists who were actually covering uh, all that chaos were being attacked. And the sad irony is that they were covering what was happening in order to amplify the voices of the people on the ground. You know? And we felt that uh, the key was going into the communities uh, in order to educate people about the role of the media, which then touches on credibility. It also touches on the safety and security of journalists, because we feel that if journalists uh, do not feel safe enough to venture into communities to cover the stories accurately and fully, it will affect the quality of the news that they produce, and it will also then affect that relationship they have with communities. Mm -hmm. So we have to go into communities to try and bring people together, which is why this year's theme is Sevala Isikeu, which is Tosa, mm -hmm. for we are bridging the gap, of course. Um, the gap. <laughs> yes, I understand <laughs> that. The gap. <laughs> yeah, so we're bridging the gap between the journalists and the communities that they serve, mm -hmm. so that the people understand that journalists are out there fighting for them. So the people in Alexandra, for example, also understand that when they attack S uh, LXFM, mm -hmm. they are doing away with a weapon that is there for them. It's a platform for them. Uh, unfortunately, of course, uh, earlier this year, one of the uh, presenters at LXFM was also killed on his way home. And we felt that it was the opportune moment for us to go into the community of Alexandra, mm -hmm. to sit down with the people of Alexandra and their community leaders, including also their schools and, and uh, their community media platforms like LXFM, mm -hmm. to have this important media literacy campaign, which we want to roll out nationally, mm -hmm. which says, can we bridge that gap between journalists 
and the, the communities they serve. Not mm -hmm. only to educate the people, but to also hear the people. Mm -hmm. Because we have to make sure that the people of these communities are invited to the table mm -hmm. whenever there are investments made into our communities. Mm -hmm. That way they will feel that they have a stake in the infrastructure that is there. And when they destroy a school or a library, they know that it is, it is uh, detrimental to them and, and their, their way mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, briefly, you, you spoke about Alex, right, and this year you'll be hosted in Alex. What role would you like, you know, the members of the public to play since their participation mm. is very important? Just briefly. In numbers, please, they have to come out and they have to ask. That is put together will be one of the media experts there. They have to ask them tough questions. Uh, what is the role of the media? What is the media doing for the people of Alex? Mm -hmm. And in getting those responses, they will get to see what the media is doing for the people of Alex and what it could do further. Mm -hmm. And to have that exchange uh, between our journalists and the people in the community, how do we solve problems? We can't have the media industry only speaking to itself about mm -hmm. the problems. As I said, the problems facing the media are societal problems. So mm -hmm. we have to invite our people to help us. I mean, the community media is, is struggling uh, when it comes to funding, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and so we need to find out why people are, why aren't people paying for their media? Mm -hmm. Why aren't the people of Soweto paying for Soweto TV? Mm -hmm. How can we make that happen? What other challenges do they have? Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of discussion needs to happen because we need to sustain our community media. Mm -hmm. The conversation is getting interesting as we go. It's time for us to take a quick ad break. When we get back, we further discuss possible solutions. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Soda Today. And before we conclude our conversation about protecting the rights of those who make sure that we stay informed, we are still joined in studio by Mr. Jerome Cluster and Mr. Temba Sibutugel. Now, um, Mr. Temba, for this year's event, what would you like you know, to learn the most? Okay, to be honest, what I would like to discuss in this year's event are two things. Honouring the bastions of, journalist, of journalism. The second one would be ensuring that we protect, preserve community media. Because from what Jerome was saying now, you don't understand how people treat community media. I know, it's, 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 it's quite painful. Mm -hmm. how, how even government spokespersons and government ministers, politicians, when you say you're gonna go to this Josie FM, they say, no, we want, a, a, we, we want Power FM. When you say you want to, to, to go to Sweet so TV, they say no. They want to go to, to Money Life. They want Leon Manas. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm saying this is where we must begin to cultivate and ensure that we build, protect, and preserve community media. Mm -hmm. Now, um, since the birth of the trust and the initiative, has there, any, has there you know, been any change or better responses from the members of the public? And also, have journalists gained their confidence to go out and report about stories? or? It's still a work in progress. From, uh, from my perspective, it's a work in progress. And what we need to do, I, th I think, the work that Jerome is doing is quite commendable. With the, with the Board of Trustees, Tabi Mazwai, Dr. George Holwe, those are doing the kind of work that we need to also amplify and ensure that we keep the name and legacy of Agriculture alive and many other channels alive. Mm -hmm. Now, Jerome, let me bring it back to you. Uh, on that special day, will there be any media coverage that we should maybe expect on the day of the event? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Soweton is one of our partners, and of course, they'll be covering the event mm -hmm. with some publicity pre the event, during the event, and post the event, as they've always done for us since the inception of the colloquium. Uh, of course, Soweto TV will be there. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got the Voice of Vets will be there as well. Mm -hmm. And yes, we also have a host of other community newspapers that will be coming on board. We've reached out to the Association of Independent Newspapers mm -hmm. uh, because, as in that day, and as in that as particular, as I said, it's important to make sure that we work with community media too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Temba, he spoke about collaboration and the importance of, you know, collaborating, you know, with these small media companies. He mentioned Soda TV, Vow FM and, and others. Now, have you also partnered with the police force to make sure that, you know, journalists who are out there in the field are protected at all times? Or are there any news, new laws that we can expect that specifically cater for journalists? Okay. There are two credible organizations. One is one that today I'm representing, the Press Council of South Africa. That, normal, that specifically deals with, with, ethical, with ethics in journalism or ethical journalism. And the second one is the lobby group of editors and senior journalists and political writers and, and academics. It's called SANEF, the South African National Editors Forum. Mm -hmm. 
It's, it, it is dealing a lot with protection of journalists. It is working with other, collaborating with, with other organizations locally and internationally mm -hmm. to ensure that they protect journalists. We, on the side of the Press Council, we are enforcing mm -hmm. ethical journalism. Mm -hmm. We want to ensure that journalists on their own are ethical, are trusted, are worthy. Their credibility is not questionable. Mm -hmm. So where some of us get really irritated and it is when journalists breaks the very same basic tenets of journalism, the mm -hmm. canon for us of, of, of the ethics of journalism and the code of conduct on how they should behave, mm -hmm. how, how they should do th I can make one, one good example. Go and watch any press conference now, especially about politics. I'm following those. You will see a reporter saying to a politician, SG, mm -hmm. call that person by his name, Mr. X, not Mr. SG, not Mr. CIC or CIC. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's why quite, quite ethical is wrong. Mm -hmm. Journalists should stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And there is no other way because ethics of journalism doesn't allow them to do that. They are not in a pol party political branch. Mm -hmm. They might be affiliated to certain political parties or being members, mm -hmm. but when you are addressing the media, you're doing your work, mm -hmm. we have to trust you that you are, you, you are speaking to a politician. You are not speaking to a comrade. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about, you know, trusting the journalist, what would you say is the reason why, you know, people end up attacking journalists or killing journalists? Because remember, when you speak about a journalist, you're speaking about the watchdog of the people. What then makes the relationship to, to become sour to a point where now people start attacking their own journalists? No, it's, it's, it's pure misunderstanding of people not understanding that the media, it is there for them. The media, it is the mirror of society. However, I'll say point blank, there are others in positions of power and authority who are fermenting such kind of attacks, who are on social media on a daily basis. I, I check how female journalists are attacked, are body shamed, are insulted, are threatened with a lot of threats. Mm -hmm. So I, I've said in most cases, those must stop. Mm -hmm. That nonsense on its own of attacking journalism must stop. Engage them. If you have an issue about a broadcast journalist, take that issue to the PCCSA. Mm -hmm. Even an issue about a print journalist, take that issue because of South Africa, simple, and that issue will be adjud adjudicated there. Mm -hmm. Not you trying to attack and threaten journalists. Mm -hmm. You are threatening other fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. These are your families, these are relatives. Mm -hmm. We are all connected one way or interconnected one way, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. If I start insulting someone, that person is connected with me one way, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that attacks and threats to journalists should stop, is not helping, mm -hmm. and society and community must understand that as journalists we live in these communities, mm -hmm. we are defending them and where they think that journalists are wrong, take appropriate steps through appropriate channels, mm -hmm. not to threats. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Jerome, let's bring it back to you. For those who want to know more about you know, the initiative and also maybe get involved, how can they do so? Great. Um, just to quickly go back, uh, the other coverage that we're having, sorry I forgot, is Newsroom Africa will be covering the event as well and of okay. course Alex FM will be covering it. But for those who want to participate, please come to the event. It will be at the Pan Africa uh, Shopping Centre in Alexandra, uh, that is Corner Watt and 3rd Avenue. Mm -hmm. And we'd also like you to engage with us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all our partners mm -hmm. will also be there with us. So please feel free to start a conversation with us um, mm -hmm. on, on, on our platforms, social media mm -hmm. platforms. Now, Mr. Temba, briefly, for someone that wants to study journalism or become a journalist, because I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming you've been in the field for quite some time, and obviously people are being discouraged because of what they see on the media, you know, journalists being killed, you know, so how would you, you know, advise someone that wants to study journalism and is discouraged? Okay, as much as the media is facing a plethora of challenges, mm -hmm. As much as people think that to be a journalist, you know, it's, it's, it's a free pass to stardom, it is not. This is activism. So the media, newspapers can decline in terms of sales, viewership of TV can decline, but journalism stays, the media stays. This is one thing that we have to hold those in power accountable to ensure that our democracy thrives. We would have seen this 30 years of democracy that, that we are heading to had it been for the role of the media. The media plays a very important and pivotal part. So if you understand journalism, go on. There are a lot of opportunities for, for you. Not easy though, but if you go there, you're going to make a difference. You're going to find challenges, but soldier on. I've been around for almost 30 years and, and I'm not deterred. I'm, I'm going nowhere. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, gentlemen, for gracing us with your presence. We do hope that people at home have taken notes, and we also hope that the event becomes a success. Like you said, so the TV will make sure that you know they grace you with their presence on that day. Thank you so much. So that was the executive director and founder of our great cluster and Mr. Temba Sibutugelo, who is a communication strategist and media trainer of the Press Council, talking to us about the importance of understanding media and the people who work in it. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us about the show by simply sending us an email on Today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011 one nine three 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 thousand from myself and the rest of the team we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after the, after this so goodbye for now yeah.